Okay, for me, perfect steak and chips is a fillet steak, mm. triple cooked chips, Bernays sauce and onion rings. Wow. Well, for me, perfect steak is uh, sirloin, okay. double cooked chips, and of course a wonderful smoky tomatoey barbecue sauce. Sounds fantastic. Well, I'm doing fillet, uh -huh. lovely marbling, and Beautiful. it's wrapped in cling film. Now, the reason we wrap it in cling film is so that it keeps its shape. And of course, it's so important that you know that you have that marbling because people don't realise it sort of naturally bases that uh, beef and keeps it nice and moist. That's as well. it. It's like it's got its ready own butter in it. Tom sears his steak in butter and olive oil to stop the butter from burning, and the cling film won't melt during cooking. Also, ageing is an important thing. Mm. This is 21 day hung for me. I much prefer a 21 day hung, but you can go over the top and. Some, some steaks are much, much older. But for me, they get a little bit gamey. I quite like quite a young kind of steak, but yeah. still with enough flavour in it. So, whilst Tom's steak is searing, it's time to crack on with his rather unusual method of making chips. So, yeah, what is this? I mean, you're doing well, your... Apple corer for my chips. I cut them all the same size using an apple corer. You can use any leftover potato trimmings to make a hearty soup. And these are ones that I've done earlier, just blanched in, in boiling salted oh, okay. water. So this way they've all cooked evenly. That way that you're never going to get chips that are overcooked and undercooked. They're all going to be pretty much the same. The whole point of cooking triple cooked chips is to take the moisture from the potato so you can get it nice and crispy on the outside without it steaming from the middle and making it soggy. Tom then fries his chips in vegetable oil at 140 degrees for 10 minutes. OK, I've just seen either side of the steak, so you've got a nice colour on both sides of the steak. And I've taken the cling film off, and then I'm going to start cooking it all around the outside. And we're going to just gently cook it in this pan, probably all the way through. It might go through the oven for a bit, but... Amazing. It just left a little bit of the fat on the outside as well, just to render in the pan. Exactly. The more, that flavours. All those flavours getting into that pan. Yeah. You, can see the you can see all this beginning to get in the yeah. pan, all those lovely beefy flavours. So Tom's steak and chips are looking good. But what will Michael do with this classic dish? Unlike you, I'm choosing the sirloin. Now, this is beautiful. I mean, you see great marbling. This is the, uh, this is the difference that goes, the main difference between the, the two cuts is you're going to get a little bit more texture in here. So there's a lot of excess fat here. And what I'm going to do, there's a natural break in there. I'm going to just trim that off, Tom, and yeah. I'm going to just chop that down a little bit so that I put it in, in, the, in, the, in the pan, using that to help cook the steak. Nice bit of seasoning. I'd like to rest mine twice as long as I've cooked it. And because it's sirloin, I like to go for four weeks hang. So that's a little bit longer 20, than you. 28 days. 28 yeah. days, yeah. 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 But yeah. I think, you know, the key to cooking a good steak is a little bit of butter in the pan. Delicious. And, of course, drop, just dropping in those bits of fat into the pan. Hot pan, get it going quite quickly, get all the caramels, and then I'm just going to baste the meat as we go. That's a really nice tip, that, with the bits of beef fat going through it to give all that added flavour. So I like to cook medium rare. Um, nice bernoisette. Bernoisette is the technical term for butter, which has been cooked till golden brown. And then we're going to render that down. Lovely colour in the pan. You really want that caramelisation, cos that's where all the fla flavouring is Yeah, as well. I'm just going to turn that down and turn my attention to my sauce. I've chosen to do a smoky, tomatoey sauce. My chef who works with me in uh, Chester spent time in New York. Right. We brought this recipe back from the good old steakhouses. So we managed to, uh, shall we say, borrow this recipe from uh, New borrow. York. Yeah, and... borrow's probably a fairer... Yeah. yeah. We've done a little bit of... Um... You're not claiming it as your own. So we're yeah. going to start that off with a little bit of olive oil. And I think, you know, it's got a bit of heat and fire into this. So we're starting off with some chopped shallots, a little bit of garlic, and uh, now quickly adding the uh, chilli, just to give it a little bit of fire. So we're going to sweat those two down. Pinch of soap just to draw out some of the moisture. Now. My steak doesn't take as long as you, so I've got this little stick here. You can use cocktail sticks. We're going to just insert that into the steak, count to seven, and then just bring it to your, your lip. And if it's warm, or, or body temperature... Yeah, blood warm. That's it, perfect, medium red. And then a little tip I like to do is just a little bit of salt and pepper after you've cooked the steak, just so it just, yeah, you know, seasoning seeps through yeah. uh, the steak itself. Get so, as much flavour into as possible. Absolutely. Back to Michael's sauce. He adds tomato paste to the shallots, garlic and chilli and cooks for a few minutes before adding the other ingredients. Now I'm going to add about 50 ml of uh, sherry vinegar and it's just important that you just cook all of that sherry out just to take it back down to that dry paste. And now... Just to finish off my sauce, I've got bay leaf, 
got a quite a lot of sugar, brown soft sugar oh, here. That's quite a lot. Yeah, a little bit of tomato chopped, equal amounts of tomato to tomato paste. And then the secret, the big daddy Lee and Perrins, in it goes. Cool, blimey. But then you're just going to cut that out. So it's, it's almost like a chutney. Well, it is. It's, it's kind of chutney stroke, you know, tomato sauce. So we're just going to leave that cooking now. Michael likes to make this in large batches as it keeps in the fridge for up to a month. In goes the tamarind. Yeah, it's almost like a sweet and sour. Tamarind is a fruit used as a souring agent in Asian cooking. Did you say tamarind there? Yeah, tamarind. So we had a block of tamarind. We just had some poke on the block. So really nice. And adds a little bit of spice to it. You can then just cook it out to whatever texture you want. Tom and Michael have got very different ideas on what makes a classic steak and chips. Which one will the judges think is perfect? 